Perseverance recently drilled its first rock core samples from the ancient Delta deposit, a major milestone for the mission. But this important event was upstaged by a wandering piece of flotsam that blew into the scene on this episode of Mars Guy. Jezero, or Jezero Crater, was chosen as the landing site for the Perseverance rover because of convincing evidence that it once held a lake, including an eroded delta deposit at the mouth of a river that flowed into the crater billions of years ago. In humanity's search for life beyond Earth, the delta is a good place to look, even if it's only long-dead microbes that might be found there. After encountering rocks too weak to withstand a grinding operation, Perseverance found a slab of layered rock that could. Here's Mars Guy for scale. This rock yielded a well-formed grind spot without breaking, which meant that the coring operation could proceed, the first one since Sol 371 in March of 2022. The first hole was drilled so easily, in rock so cohesive, that the extracted core was the longest one yet obtained. This is the point to stop watching for those who may be outraged by the sight of a bit of spacecraft debris or ashamed of humans for attempting to explore Mars with relatively primitive technology. In the infancy of our exploration of the cosmos, some detritus is unavoidable. No amount of comments posted on this channel will change that reality. It will be changed by engineers given additional time and money to develop better technology. Sometime during the five Martian sols between the first and second coring operation, a ball of tangled fiber arrived in front of the rover. Here's a 9 centimeter Swiss army knife for scale. Then a few sols later, it was gone, leaving only vague traces in the sand. It's unlikely to have come from anything on the rover. Instead, it probably was produced during one of the steps needed to deploy the rover's landing system or from the crash landing of one of its components. But it's the Martian wind that both delivered the detritus to and removed it from the work volume of the rover. This is the second clearly identified piece of spacecraft detritus found within the terrain informally known as the Bacon Strip following the recent discovery of a bit of spacecraft thermal blanket. This is notable because no other such bits have been recognized anywhere else along the rover's more than 11 kilometer traverse over the past 15 months. So these observations may be documenting the dominant wind direction in this portion of the crater floor, a bit of fortuitous science made possible from the wreckage of an interplanetary spaceship. Martian wind is routinely measured by a weather station on the rover known as META, and gusts of wind have been recorded by the microphone used by the SuperCam instrument to record the sound of its laser-zapping rocks. Here's a sample made back on Sol 131. So despite having an atmospheric pressure less than 1% that of Earth's atmosphere at sea level, Mars has enough air to whip up dust devils, push sand into ripples, and dump it onto the rover deck. That pressure is equivalent to an altitude of about 100,000 feet on Earth, plenty of air to float stratospheric balloons and to interact with the grid fins of a descending SpaceX rocket. And there's just enough Martian atmosphere to allow a superlight helicopter with four-foot-long rotors spinning at more than 2,500 RPM to take flight. But that's plenty of air to push a bit of spacecraft flotsam into photos of a key moment for Perseverance. 